My name is John Strong, and uh, I'm here to talk uh, briefly about the emergence of wood mid-rise buildings, which are actually becoming quite common throughout North America. They began with some code changes locally in places like Seattle and Portland, and then quickly moved up into Vancouver, British Columbia. And these code changes allowed wood frame buildings to be taller than just the three-story that we had used for literally for a century. So one of the reasons for these changes is that people are more and more interested in using materials that are locally sourced and environmentally friendly. Because wood is a very popular resource in the Pacific Northwest, this is where this began. But because of other issues of environmental uh, performance, we've seen a lot more changes, you know, whether it be in Texas or Baltimore or Montreal, and people are using four-story, five-story, and as much as six-story buildings. The building codes in the United States and Canada have been evolving to deal with the possibility of these higher mid-rise wood frame buildings. Some of those codes explicitly describe when you can use wood frame and what fire control strategies you need to use. A lot of times that will benefit from using a non-combustible stone wool insulation. Other times it will require the addition of sprinklers or limit the building size or street access. These, these projects are different than concrete and steel because of these nuanced fire control requirements. And that is one of the code distinctions between them. Also, unlike the normal, quote unquote, concrete and steel that we've been building for decades in the four, five, and six story category, these buildings actually have many other issues to deal with. Issues such as shrinkage, differential movement, creep, construction moisture affecting the wood and other issues that relate to the nature of wood as being distinct from concrete and steel. Now there are many types of wood frame buildings but from a form peg point of view uh, the most obvious three types are podium construction where a first floor of concrete or steel construction or masonry construction is built and used for a purpose such as retail or public service and then on top of that podium is built basically a four-story or even a five-story wood frame building. Stick frame buildings, as they call them, are basically wood frames assembled on the job site and assembled right from grade level up to roof level. And so that's the normal all wood frame building. We also have hybrid wood frame buildings where we may use a concrete masonry unit or poured concrete elevator core and stairwells and wood frame around it or even other variations of steel moment frames with infill of wood framing. And then of course we have the ability to do prefabrication of wood frame, much like we do with many other systems. But as we are building these four and six story buildings, a lot in built up urban centers into panelization typically, and occasionally even modularization. So some of the issues that are uh, being raised by using these mid-rise wood frame constructions is that the loading is of course higher as the buildings get taller. As a consequence, we see more structural wood framing and even steel framing within the exterior enclosure of the building. This raises a number of issues, one of which is related to construction moisture, but the other is how are we going to get proper insulation values, which to meet the true environmental goals of these buildings uh, requires to be pretty high. And so the obvious answer becomes we need to use continuous insulation on the exterior. And that really does solve the thermal bridging caused by all of these studs and it also provides lots of moisture protection by keeping the studs at a more stable temperature and allowing those studs to dry more effectively to the outside. However, once we use the insulation on the outside in a continuous layer, we now have to find a way of attaching our cladding. And so there are a number of cladding attachment solutions that are, have been developed already to make it easy to attach a wide range of claddings, literally as wide as masonry veneer, stucco, fiber cement, metal panels, and terracotta over one and a half to four, five, six inches of stone wall. Well, once you move from a three-story building to a five-story building, there's actually quite a bit more wind and rain. So this means that our enclosure design has to be better. 
we have more robust window installation details showing better drainage and air tightness. We have better water resistive barriers being applied over the wood framing that will be able to tolerate more rain and more wind. We have to also accommodate differential movement between floors as wood framing shrinks more and therefore this affects the joints that we create in our cladding and flashing details needed to get the, in, the water out of the system. So what do we see in the future? A broader expectation of our building codes to properly account for thermal bridging, reach higher R value targets, meet better air tightness and perhaps requiring air tightness testing like they do of every building in Washington State. And we're also going to see other changes like needing to meet more low carbon sustainability goals and more resiliency. On resiliency, what we mean is the ability to withstand sudden changes in the energy supply or in terms of the environment. And this has become more and more important as we've seen variable weather effects cause things like uh, Hurricane Sandy in New York City where people lost power and water for weeks at a time. So how is a building going to respond to those types of dramatic challenges? That's what resiliency is about. On the sustainability front and the carbon front, there's going to be more of an expectation on specific targets about how are we reducing carbon and nuanced energy requirements about how do we reduce the need for peak power because it is peak power that creates the need to build a new power plant. So as we learn about how to build more wood frame buildings, lots of changes are going to still come, but they're going to be on a pretty predictable tra uh, trend line. Better energy performance, lower environmental impact, and as always, they'll want it cheaper, they'll want it faster, they'll want it safer.